follow me on my journey home from Papua New Guinea in the South Pacific all the way to Manchester in the UK. I'm currently working on a LNG project in the Parari jungle, which is along the Parari River in the Gulf Province region of the Southern Highlands. The journey starts with a 25 minute boat ride along the river to the Parari airstrip. Disembark the boat, up the stairs, appreciate the views of the river, then it's a short five minute walk up the runway to the small terminal area. A short wait in the terminal area while we waited for the flight to arrive, which was on time. Here she is going overhead before she lands. We're flying on a DHC-6 twin otter aircraft. She makes a landing, backtracks along the runway, parks at the ramp, and those disembarking the flight are just starting their five-week rotation, and I'm going home after completing my five-week rotation. Boarded the flight, we're flying to Jackson's International Airport in Port Moresby. A quick backtrack around the runway, turn around for takeoff, and it doesn't take long for this aircraft to get in the air. It only needs a short runway. So as we climb out of the Parari airstrip, you can see just how dense this jungle really is. There are villages, uh, people that live in the villages, they, some of them have never been to the city, never left the jungle, they don't have mobile phones, electric or anything like that and they just live off the land and they're so happy but we're not allowed to go too close to them in case we pass on a virus which could potentially wipe out their village. So there's the airstrip as we fly to Port Barsby. The flight took about 1 hour 15 minutes. Normally we use a Beechcraft King Air 200 which is a bit quicker, it takes about 50 minutes. Bumpy approach but a smooth landing into Jackson's International Airport in Port Moresby where I disembarked, quickly collected my luggage and there was a car waiting for me to take me down to our logistics base where I had a quick meeting with some suppliers. It took me about 25 minutes to get there driving through Port Moresby. I was at the logistics base for about one hour where I had the quick meeting and then it was time to leave and my driver was happy to carry my bag to the car which was very kind of him. I was heading back to the National Capital District area of Port Moresby to check into the Grand Papua Hotel. This dusty road can sometimes be very dangerous because cars just appear out of nowhere so I checked into the hotel got to my room the first thing I noticed was it was about 100 degrees Celsius in the room because the AC was off the first thing I did was switch on the AC and as I always do just appreciate them views at night time I went out for some beers to Alibi's Bar and Grill which is one of my favorite places in Port Moresby this was my first beer for five weeks I then retired to bed back at the hotel as I had to be up early the next morning. Quick breakfast, driver picked me up, took me to the office where I had some admin to catch up on and to catch up with some colleagues. And the first thing I did is went for the coffee machine and just appreciate that view again from the sixth floor. At the end of the day, my five-week shift was officially over, so as I always do, I went for a couple of beers, this time at the Port Terrace Bar and Restaurant, which is just next to the office, and also had some nice views. Next morning, back at the hotel, quick breakfast, packed my bags, and it was time to go to the airport. On my journey home, I was flying out of Port Moresby with Air New Guinea, which is the national carrier of Papua New Guinea. First stop was going to be Hong Kong, where I transferred to Emirates, and then I was going to fly all the way to Manchester in the UK via a quick stop in Bangkok, Thailand, Dubai, and then on the way, on the way to Manchester. Arrived at the airport, I was already checked in and I already had hand luggage. I was literally out of the car, 
through security, through immigration, and in the New Guinea Paradise Lounge within about five minutes. It was an absolute breeze. It always is in this airport. I tried this drink for the first time. It's called Chiller. Quite nice, actually. The flight was delayed by about 45 minutes. Eventually, we were called and made our way to the aircraft. This is Air New Guinea's, one of Air New Guinea's Boeing 767-300s. It's about 35 years old. They call it the bed of paradise. This is Air New Guinea's business class cabin. As you can see, it's it's quite an old design, it's got a very 1980s look about it. But when it comes to business class, when I'm flying long haul, I'm easily pleased. As long as I can lay flat and get asleep, I don't really care about anything else, to be honest. Push back from the gate about an hour late. Just a short taxi to the runway watched a couple of planes come in to land before we lined up. Not much time for lining up and waiting on the runway because there was an aircraft inbound, so we were on our way more or less straight away. So this flight was taking me from Port Moresby to Hong Kong, where I was to transfer to Emirates on the A380 to Dubai via a quick stop in Bangkok, Thailand. I had a few drinks on board, something to eat, the food wasn't too bad. It's not the best, but it's certainly not the worst. Like I say, it does the job. I'm easily pleased. And I fell asleep on this flight. I had to be woken up before we landed in Hong Kong. But I had to move seat be because my lie flat seat actually broke and it wouldn't go back to the upright position. So I had to move seats. And that's not the first time it's happened on this particular aircraft. So this is my live flat bed in the broken position and the seat which I moved to, which was just in front of me. Here we are on approach into Hong Kong. We were about one hour late. So I almost missed my connection to Dubai via Bangkok. As I exited the aircraft, I went to the terminal area looking for an airline desk so I could print my boarding pass because the Emirates app wouldn't allow me to download it. But there was, there was nobody around. All of the airline desks were closed and I couldn't find a machine to print my boarding pass then. Some, somebody from the airport appeared with my name on a board asking if this was me and I said yes. And then she started screaming at me, asking why I wouldn't answer the call when she was calling my name in the business class lounge, which I found confusing because I didn't go to the business class lounge. So then it was a mad dash through the airport. Here she is, marching me to the gate. She wasn't very happy at all, but I just made the flight. So I settled down on board and we departed Hong Kong. And as soon as the seatbelt signs were switched off, I was back on my feet and I went to the onboard lounge, as I always do, for a couple of beers. I didn't stay in the lounge for long because the effects of the jet lag were starting to take hold. So I quickly went back to my seat after a quick beer and I slept through the entire stopover in Bangkok. And when I woke up again, we were approaching Dubai and I was given this unbelievable breakfast, which was quickly eaten. And then we approached and landed in Dubai.
disembarked the Airbus A380 in Dubai, which was always a great experience, and it was about a 10 minute walk to security. Something I've always wanted to do was put my phone while it's recording through the baggage scanner to see what it looks like inside. Here it is, and it was quite disappointing to be honest. I went to the Emirates business class lounge where my boarding pass wasn't working because I was in the wrong lounge. So I had a quick walk through the airport, quick train journey, and I eventually got to the correct lounge, which was close to my gate. I went for a shower and a change of clothes to freshen up, and you'll notice I'm wearing some Emirates slippers because I put my white shoes in to get cleaned and polished, which was only 10 dirhams. I went to the bar in the lounge, there was nobody around, so I did what I've done before and just helped myself. I went back to the guy who cleaned my shoes to collect them and to be honest they look brand new and I think he did quite a good job. Happy with my clean shoes we boarded another Airbus A380 and the boarding gate was actually inside the lounge which is convenient. I sat down with a welcome drink as I always do and then it was just a, a short 10-15 minute taxi out to the runway. And we took off and we were bound for Manchester. By now the jet lag was really hitting home so as soon as the seatbelt sign went off I went straight to the lounge but instead of a beer I had an espresso and then I sat down and enjoyed the Emirates service and the food again was absolutely superb. Smooth landing into Manchester on a really hot and sunny day. I said hello to all the people who were plane spotting at that particular very popular spot. Disembarked the aircraft and it was just a short walk through the terminal to the train station. Due to some engineering works on the Manchester Railway, there was some replacement bus services which I opted not to take. So I decided to take a taxi from Manchester Airport Railway to Manchester Victoria where I fed some pigeons. We left Manchester Victoria and it was about a two and a half hour journey home. This time I was absolutely dead because of the jet lag but as soon as I got home my dog Teddy was happy to see me.